on. Bitch on the fly. Tricky in this wind. I was on a fly about three feet deep. There's that trout. He's nice, he's a fatty. That's not a holdover, that's a fairly recent planter, but uh, we will take him. That's a nice fish to break the ice on, and uh, he jumped all over a Tui Chub pattern trolling fly. I'm not... well, he smashed that fly. What a beautiful rainbow. Nice fish, 16, 17 inches long probably. Just a beautiful trout. That is a blue back uh, smelt pattern fly, and uh, that was my fourth hit. But uh, that's the hit that counted right there. Look at that trout. That's a dandy rainbow. Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. That's what trolling flies can do. You think trolling flies don't work? Well, think again. You need to grab a set of my trolling flies, get out on the water, and get ready to go big. Ah, <laughs> yes. Hey guys, Cal Kellogg here. Um, I've had a recurring question over the past couple weeks and typically when I get a recurring question from a bunch of different viewers, I make a video and answer it. Sometimes I'll just answer, you know, a, a single question I get just once in video. But uh, if I'm getting a recurring question, I know it's on a bunch of people's minds. So it's something that, that I need to address. Question goes like this. Hey Kel, when you're pulling a trolling fly like that, look at that fly, I just pulled that one out of my box. That's a beautiful fly right there. It's never been run before, so it's in perfect condition. Um, question goes like this. Hey Kel, when you're pulling a fly, do you always pull an action disc with it? And this is an action disc, or as sometimes I call them a wiggle disc. And if you're unfamiliar with what one is, it's a disc, it's got a little stem on it, and it is hollow inside. So. You slide this on your leader, then you tie on the fly, and when you troll the fly through the water, that disc rides on the nose of the fly, and it causes intense vibration to be transmitted to the fly. It makes those fibers vibrate and move, and you see that tinsel in the fly, it causes a lot of flash, a lot of sparkle. Um, it's just a very effective presentation. Now, speaking for myself, I run the action disc probably 90% of the time, but there's a reason for that. Um, I love the action that the action disc or wiggle disc imparts to the fly, but I'm often in my kayak and my hands aren't really free to do a lot of manipulation on the rod. Now the late, great Jay Fair, he used to fish up on Eagle Lake, he really was the guy, um, at, least, at least you know, in my view, he was the guy that perfected fly trolling in Northern California. And uh, he would troll for those big Eagle Lake rainbows. He developed his own line of streamer flies and he would add all the action to the flies by manipulating the rod. In fact, when he was in his heyday, I don't think action discs or wiggle discs even existed at that time. So I guess to, to answer the question is, I run the action disc a lot, 90 plus percent of the time, whether I'm in the kayak or in a boat. But you could certainly troll flies with no action, just draw them through the water column. Some days, less is more. Um, great example of that is the Ned rig and bass fishing. You know, that's just a straight worm on a jig head. There's not much going on there. But if the bass want a subtle presentation, that thing is deadly. And the same can be true of trout that are a little turned off, not super aggressive. You can slow troll a fly with no imparted action, no wiggle disc, no nothing. Just pull it straight through the water and uh, it will get hit. There are days like that. So, you know, again, experimentation on the water is key. Experiment, experiment, experiment. Figure out what the fish want. Give them what they want. You're going to have a big smile on your face. Now, if you're in a traditional boat and your hands are freed up and you can do some manipulation with the rod, there's several things you can do. Obviously, if you're pulling a fly on a downrigger, you're not going to be doing a lot of manipulation. It's on a downrigger. But if you're top lining a fly with, say, just a split shot on your line, or maybe you're using a lead core outfit or a hybrid lead core outfit, there's a lot of room to manipulate that fly um, using the rod. Now, you could just hold the rod you know, 90 degrees to the water and twitch it, twitch it, twitch it, move it around, twitch it some more. That's gonna be effective. Now, I've seen videos of Jay Fair 
And what he did, he'd stand at the back of the boat, he would aim the rod off the back of the boat, and he would either just rotate the rod tip in circles like that, nice tight little circle, or he'd work, he'd work the rod tip in a figure eight action. And what that would do, it would, it would cause this, 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 this kind of action on the fly. And that's what's gonna trigger the strike. It's that, you know, dart stop, dart stop, dart stop, dart stop. That's very attractive to any kind of predatory fish. That's why a, uh, that's why a Zara spook works on the top. It goes, you know, one way, the other, one way, the other, and it stops for a nanosecond in between movements that trigger strikes. When I rig something behind a dodger, I try to replicate that motion. I want it to, you know, surge, stop, surge, stop, surge, stop, and that just seems to really press the buttons of any kind of predatory fish, trout and salmon included. So if you're fishing from a traditional boat and you're pulling flies, don't hesitate to get rid of the wiggle disc and experiment with manipulating the fly using the rod tip. And uh, from what I've heard, and I haven't played with it a whole lot, I gotta be honest, that Jay Fair approach where he's aiming the rod directly off the back of the boat and he's either doing that or he's doing the figure eight motion is a very effective presentation. What I will say from what I've seen, and again, Jay Fair is gone and I never had the opportunity to fish with him. He was doing a lot of shallow water trolling, which would seem to be an easier kind of environment to manipulate a fly in rather than a fly that's down 20 feet. But I'm sure using my hybrid lead core rig, there's very little stretch in the line. You can get a lot of movement on a fly by, by rotating a rod tip or doing that figure eight action. Um, Jay was fishing water that was so shallow at times, he was kind of using the opposite of my hybrid rig. And if you're unfamiliar with my hybrid rig, it's braid, three colors of lead core, and then a leader. Well, what Jay would use, he would use backing, some sort of braid. Um, he would use a section of floating fly line and then a leader, and that ensured that he could get his, his fly well behind the boat but not have it going so deep in, in shallow water that he was dredging the bottom. Because he was fishing, now, now in the north end of Eagle Lake, the water levels drop, so a lot of the areas where Jay used to fish, there's no water now. But when he was fishing it, when the lake was at capacity, the, the water in a lot of those areas was only three or four feet deep. Um, and, and one of his keys that he talks about was getting the fly well away from the boat in that shallow water and he would use that section of floating fly line to enable him to get the fly way back there but still only be trolling a foot or two beneath the surface and from what i've seen he was a guy that liked to troll his flies very slowly which is a conventional approach so anyhow i'm kind of rambling so wiggle discs and flies if you're just starting out if you're trolling from a kayak even if you're not I recommend that the majority of the time you run that wiggle disc, you see me, I catch a lot of nice fish doing that. I catch a lot of fish doing that. Um, but if that's not working for you or you want to experiment and you're in a position where you can manipulate the rod tip, by all means, play with it. Try some of that 90 degree twitching action. Try some of that aiming the rod tip at the fly, doing some circles, doing some figure eights. You probably do a triangle, whatever. The key is, is that you want to impart an erratic kind of darting action to that fly and that's going to trigger those followers to become strikers and that's what you want strikers they end up in the in the frying pan which is uh, which is ultimately what we're looking to do anyhow i'm kel kellogg i'm signing off for now i was having a little bit of fun with this video but uh, that is a very good question and uh, i think experimentation with the flies is going to help you catch more and bigger fish throughout the season i think we're just scratching the surface when it comes to trolling flies for trout and salmon not a ton of guys are doing it so there's a lot of room a lot of latitude to play with the presentation and really dial in what works for you on your boat anyhow i'm kel kellogg i want to thank you guys for all the support i am signing off and uh, if you're looking for trolling flies lead core rods all that kind of stuff and more you know where it's located fishhuntshoot.com my tackle is deadly it's the same stuff you see me fishing here on the channel and you know me i'm always yelling fish on anyway i'm kel kellogg i will catch you later thanks a lot guys you have a wonderful day